as the United States a hundred years ago. A new nation of vast distances where opportunity awaited those who had the courage and initiative to seize it. In the 1840s and 50s, this young America was extending its boundaries across the continent. New lands were acquired, new territories were opened, new frontiers were established. No question of America's bigness in those early years. But that very bigness had in it the weakness that threatened the economic hopes of our young nation. What good were these new hopes that beckoned across almost endless stretches of land when our people could reach them only by travel on horseback or covered wagon trains across vast prairies? The rigors of stagecoach travel on washed out trails or the slow, tedious journeys down rivers and canals. As in every period of crisis in the economic growth of America, men of enterprise and foresight arose to meet the challenge. They built the railroads, a new form of transportation that saw shining rails supplant the torturous trails of the wagon train, and engines of steam carry people and goods on a silver highway that was destined to lead America to industrial greatness. The railroad reached into every corner of the land. It provided a growing America with a spark to light the torch of progress. It was the dynamic force needed to transform a vigorous, sprawling country into a rich and powerful nation. New inventions spurred the continuing advance of our industrial needs. And in the vanguard of these achievements was the automobile. The early horseless carriage gave little indication of the tremendous popularity it was to enjoy, or the vital effect it was to have on the American way of existence. The roads and streets that had served the horse and carriage soon became inadequate to meet the demands of automobile travel. The passing years brought successive road building programs initiated on local, state, and national levels. As roads were built, the number of motor vehicles using these roads increased at an accelerated pace. Today, we are still faced with the need for safer, better highways to support our motorized economy. One segment of that economy, the rising industry of motor freight carriers, has a particular interest in adequate highways because it depends on them for the speed and efficiency of its operations. The number of these highway freight carriers and the number of vehicles they operate also have steadily increased, brought about largely through the building of new plants in outlying sections of industrial areas where direct rail service is not readily available. Of course, the motorist feels that he too has more than a passing interest in the cost and upkeep of our highway system. Yet really adequate highways and access routes are a long way from reality. Here is an extreme example. The road is blocked. Traffic is at a standstill. Here is another road, a railroad. One of its characteristics is excess capacity, the ability to take on more of the transportation load. Both railroad men and representatives of common carrier trucking companies believe our transportation system will benefit by putting trucks on that steel highway and carrying them between cities on railway flat cars. And what flat cars? Giant new 75-footers that carry two large trailers each. Yes, piggyback is what the railroad and progressive trucking companies are offering to the traffic manager with a job of transportation on his hands. And it isn't a new, untried idea. As long back as the last century, the Long Island Railroad brought in wagon loads of potatoes on flat cars. Look closely, and you'll see that the horses rode in boxcars on the same train. This new type of service soon spread to other railroads, and in the years that followed, piggyback transport received great impetus. Some railroads offering this type of service have used and still use their own truck trailers. But the most dramatic recent growth has been in the type of piggyback transport available to common carrier truckers, as exemplified by the Pennsylvania Railroad's truck train service. 
Here, on America's largest railroad, the future of truck train may well be determined. And just what is truck train? Well, for a first-hand look at this most recent step in the progress of American transportation, let's make the trip on a fast freight truck train. Our trip starts at the shipper's plant. This particular truck is carrying merchandise from Chicago to New York. The driver picks it up as per instructions, and after sealing the door of the van, he begins the journey across Chicago to the railroad yards in the south side of the city. The terminal point in Chicago, as in most large cities, is accessible from many different routes. This advantage enables the driver to use such roads and streets as are less likely to be congested with traffic. Upon arrival at the yard, the trailer is driven onto a scale where it is weighed to make certain it conforms to the required standards. It is also checked for height. A steel band is placed across the doors. And while the driver checks the trailer in, the steel band is sealed in place. Having obtained his receipt for the shipment, the driver moves his truck out promptly to make room for the next arrival. As his last part in the operation, the driver takes his trailer to the loading yard located on railroad property. In this area, he parks it close to the ramp among other trailers waiting to be loaded. The driver leaves his trailer and returns to the trucking company. Flat cars are specially built for this service, each one large enough to hold two big trailers. Now, another driver hooks up to our trailer. He is a specialist in loading the trailer onto the flat cars and will place the trailer on the string of cars assigned to carry it to its destination. His trained eye heads it up the ramp straight for the bridging plates to the flat cars. Then down along between the limits of the flat car railings. The tires roll straight to their mark. Wheel chocks are immediately placed to prevent movement of the trailer. And special supporting jacks are swung into position while retaining chains are tightened. Regular truck tractors may be used to load the trailers, or they may have the newly developed twin steering wheel. This enables the driver to look straight ahead of him, regardless of the direction in which he is traveling. Once more, a trailer travels with precision down the waiting line of flat cars. The hook of a retaining chain firmly grips the heavy guardrail as other wheel chocks slide snugly to the tires. With swift efficiency, the loading team is soon ready to move on to the next arrival. For at loading time, the trailers pour in in a steady stream. Before the train departs from the loading track, every trailer is examined to make sure it is securely in place. It is late Saturday afternoon in Chicago as this fast freight train pulls out eastbound for New York via Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. Out of Chicago through the night rolling across Indiana and then into Ohio and across Pennsylvania headed for Pittsburgh, Philadelphia and New York. Clear track ahead on its own all-weather roadway. Long before dawn on Monday, arrival in Jersey City of this train that left Chicago late Saturday. 900 miles in transit, early second morning arrival, and cargo ready for delivery at final destination on the East Coast. The trailers are released from their moorings and wheel chocks. Away they go to their various delivery points in New York and other cities. Let's follow ours on the last lap of its journey. Here it is.
is at the receiving platform of the consignee in New York and ready for unloading. The last step in Operation Truck Train. What we have just seen is the merging of public service by the railroad and the common carrier truck. What are the benefits? Joint participation enables the trucking company to concentrate its employees on sales and service in a terminal area and permits the railroad to assume the responsibilities of the fast, long-haul operations which characterize truck train service. It thus strengthens two segments of our important common carrier system. In like manner, it enables trucking company personnel and railroad employees to share in a growing form of transportation with increasing opportunities as this type of freight shipment serves more and more terminal points, carries more and more trailers, and an increasing variety of goods. To the shipper, truck train service offers still another form of transportation competing for his business, one with obvious advantages to meet his needs for fast, high-quality service on a large scale. To all interested in the adequacy of our highway system, this form of transportation offers the possibility that, as it grows, it will contribute in some measure to lessening the burden on our road system of steadily mounting over-the-road motor traffic. For the railroads offer clear passage on their own roadway. On this roadway, day and night, in good weather and bad, truck train traffic is scheduled and routed to provide high-speed, dependable transportation service. These, then, are some of the benefits flowing from the present trend toward shipment of trailers on rail. Benefits that will become even greater as this new type of freight transport develops in range and scope. In effect, a cooperative working arrangement between the railroads and the trucking companies of America. It is in the true spirit of the opening of new frontiers that has made ours a great nation. It is true progress in transportation progress that will help all of us. Growing America with a spark to light the torch of progress. It was the dynamic force needed to transform a vigorous, sprawling country into a rich and powerful nation. New inventions spurred the continuing advance of our industrial needs, and in the vanguard of these achievements was the automobile. The early horseless carriage gave little indication of the tremendous these new hopes that beckoned across almost endless stretches of land when our people could reach them only by travel on horseback or covered wagon trains across vast prairies. The rigors of stagecoach travel on washed out trails or the slow, tedious journeys down rivers and canals. As in every period of crisis in the economic growth of America, the United States a hundred years ago, a new nation of vast distances where opportunity awaited those who had the courage and initiative to seize it. Men of enterprise and foresight arose to meet the challenge. They built the railroads, a new form of transportation that saw shining rails supplant the torturous trails of the wagon train. And engines of steam carry people and goods on a silver highway that was destined to lead America to industrial greatness. The railroad reached into every corner of the land. It provided, a, in the 1840s and 50s, this young America was extending its boundaries across the continent. New lands were acquired. New territories were opened. New frontiers were established. No question of America's bigness in those early years. But that very bigness had in it the weakness that threatened the economic hopes of our young nation. What good were the...